I could have maybe Matt and Hector, if you two could just uh, unmute real quick. And uh, if you're still praying, please don't stop. Um, please don't stop. Uh, I felt such a strong, just, just a weight of repentance, conviction. Just I felt the Lord just pulling on my spirit, on my heart. And he really loosed. Uh, the Lord used Matthew Wilson right here to loose upon us the realness of repentance and really taking inventory of our spirit. And I just wanted to give uh, Brother Hector an opportunity if he felt to mention anything along with Brother Matt. The only thing I'll say real quick before Hector, if he has anything to say, is um I almost mentioned this and I, I didn't feel to get into it, but after hearing Brother Wilson, the Bible says that when, when Peter recognized and saw Jesus, he fell at his feet and said, a oh, wicked man that I am, and mm -hmm. grabbed his feet. It's impossible. It's impossible to truly see Jesus and not fall at his feet and not recognize how far away you are from him in the lack of holiness and how holy he is. And you see the contrast. And it was even in the book of Isaiah when he was, he was complaining. Isaiah was complaining about everybody else. What was them? What was this? What was that? What were these drunkards? Whoa, 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 whoa. And then he gets to Isaiah six to chapter six where the scripture talks about how he sees the Lord high and lifted up. And then he says, woe is me. When he saw the Lord, when he saw the revelation of, of, of God, of the cross, well, he didn't see the cross, but you see what I'm saying? The revelation of the cross, the revelation of Jesus Christ. When you see the revelation of who God is, it should bring you to the end of yourself. It should bring you to a realization that I cannot do this without him. And the more you'd seek him, the more you'd seek the cross and reach for the cross, the more you'd realize he, not only do you need the cross, but everybody else needs the cross. But I just feel to tell you guys that, that we have got to not lose sight of when you see him, you also see you. And you see the you that desperately... Brother Hector, do you feel to share anything? I'm I'm just reminded. I'm so challenged by the word tonight. Um, John the Baptist's cry was, "Less uh, he must increase, and I must decrease." And uh, I think we got to be so careful in believing our own press in what people say about us. I. I want to be a blessing to people. I want the ministry that God enables me to minister in to be a blessing to people. But if we only ever believe what people say and let that puff us up and forget the cross and the bloodiness of Jesus's sacrifice, we will make it about ourselves. And uh, it's all about the cross. And I, I really want to push you as I feel as I feel pushed to let this weigh on your spirit. Let the cross weigh on your spirit tonight. Don't shuffle off the cross because uh, they told jesus to get off his cross and mm. uh, it's the cry of the flesh to say get off the cross don't get off the cross stay on the cross and die on the cross and every man and every woman has their own cross and i can't you can't die on my cross and I can't die on your cross, and we can't even die on Jesus' cross. He died on his cross for us to be saved, but we've all got to die on our own cross for us to know him. So I want to just briefly say, let the cross weigh on your heart. 
and don't shuffle away from the cross because ultimately it's the cross that produces true relationship with him and partnership with him and knowing him. And that's all that life is really about. That is so good. And I hope that you all, like Hector is saying, do not rush. Uh, do not. Um, I don't want to, I don't know if the word is grieve, but it's very important when you feel something like this, that it's on your spirit, that you do not, like Hector saying, shuffle. I think a good word he used was shuffle away from it that you really let the word get into your spirit and work on you and plow and pull some things up. I'm afraid that I think sometimes in fasting as well, when we talk about fasting, um, we make it all about power. I got to fast so I can be more powerful. I got to fast so that I can be more anointed. The reason you fast is so that you can realize what is in you that needs to be removed. But I think sometimes we fast so much just because we want sensitivity for power. But really, you need sensitivity for realization of what needs to die in you. And it's hard to know what's there if you're not sensitive and paying attention to what the Lord's trying to show you that's in your spirit that has to be put on the altar. We need to fast to hear the voice of the Lord, to bring things to the surface, to reveal what's got to die. What's got to die. And Mike, whether... if you if you permit me, I want to add, I want to add to what you're saying because go ahead. Um, fasting, we're so <laughs> carnal. Let's be honest, folks. We are so carnal that fasting is only ever an affliction to the flesh. When biblically fasting is an affliction to the soul. That's very good. There's so many layers of flesh in our lives that one day of fasting only ever bothers our eating habit and our irrit irritability and our schedule and our conveniences. And fasting never gets to the root of what the biblical intent was, and that's to afflict the soul. It's the soul that manages our emotions and our will so good and it's the soul that ultimately needs saving mm -hmm. and we don't fast for achievement we fast to assimilate to the will of god and i i'm i'm challenged i'm challenged because the word of god is there's no substitute for letting it produce in our spirits and in our souls and ultimately in, in the actions of our body but it's uh it's okay to let uh, let re-examination happen unfortunately the the adversary has perverted for many people the intent of fasting and even the intent of looking ourselves in the mirror because we're so insecure in our flesh that it's hard for us to re-examine ourselves. We're so insecure in the flesh that it's so, we can't, we can't allow the Lord to examine our soul and our, in our own flesh. And we start thinking about our inferiorities and our vulnerabilities. And we start talking like God can't use me and God doesn't want to bless me and God doesn't want me to grow because we're so insecure. But if we can let that die on the cross and let the Lord contextualize our weaknesses, let the Lord give context to our vulnerabilities, then we can nail them to the cross and ultimately walk in that which Brother Matthew talked about in the beginning of the message, that it's, it's not about our weaknesses. It's ultimately dying to ourselves so that he could live. And it's not our faith, it's his faith. It's not our words, it's his words. It's not our ministry, our souls. It's God's ministry working in and through us, and it's God's souls ultimately. 
just wanted to share that because you were talking about um, fasting and the examination of the flesh. It's got to drive us to relationship. Yeah. I think that we allow fasting, like Hector's saying, to drive us to focus on gifting and anointing. But everything flows out of relationship, out of the voice of the Lord. And the ultimate goal has got to be that I die so he can live through me. And unfortunately, I think that our, our flesh, without even realizing it, is trying to spiritualize itself so it can stay in control. And so it stays in control and we're operating a lot out of flesh rather than that really dying. And like Hector saying, getting into the soul, into our will. I mean, if, by what Hector's saying, that is so revelatory. I hope somebody jotted that down. Yeah. Because the thing is that if your fasting is only getting to your flesh, it's not really getting to your soul. That's where your will is. That means that the, so the fast didn't even really accomplish what it was supposed to do, which was to get your will more in alignment with his will. I am very challenged and convicted by both of these. Thank you, Matthew, for releasing. I mean, you could just feel the burden for souls just crash upon us. And then the way the Lord used you to just release this, this conviction. But yeah. I, I have been on my own journey in the last little while, last few weeks of just recognizing, you know what? I got a lot of problems. <laughs> I got a lot of issues. And to be honest with you, you're in the best place you can be when you realize how messed up you are, because it means that you must be seeing Jesus from a new angle. Because when the men in the Old Testament and the men in the New Testament, when they truly saw Jesus, they also saw themselves and they said, I've got to fall at his feet. I've got to know him more. I've got to have him in my life. Let's labor to see the cross so we can see how lost we are without it and how lost everybody else is without it. Brother Wilson, do you feel to, to say anything else before we close up tonight? It is so powerful. Um, I don't want to take away anything from anything that was just said. Um, I think that what God just allowed you two to say was what we needed to hear. Um, I will say this, Brother Hector was talking about everyone dying on their own cross. And I forgot I was reading. And they did say, you know, you said destroy this temple and in three days you'll raise it up. Um, you know, if you be this and you be that, take yourself down from this cross. Um, I want to say, and this is the last thing I'll say, um, if it's easy to get off your cross, then you're not being stretched. Um, since when has it become, if it's comfortable, you're not stretched. If when you get comfortable in God and you get comfortable in prayer, you get comfortable in your study, you get comfortable in fasting, you get comfortable in ministry, you get comfortable in what you're doing, there's no way that you're stretched. Because the ultimate stretching of Jesus was that this physical body can't take any more. I'm pulled as far as I can go this way, and I'm pulled as far as I can go this way. Now, if it's easy for you to get down off your cross, there's some part of you that's not stretched and there's some part of you that's comfortable. So the only thing I would say is, if you feel stretched, know that you are probably in the Holy Ghost. Now, I'm not talking about just doing things to make busyness, but I'm talking about allowing God to stretch you until the flesh has to submit to the will of God. And then you can look at those that are crucifying you and say, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. You can look at those that shun you and say, Father, forgive them. Because my, my flesh is stretched so far. I'm so open to the will of the Father at this, at this state. Nothing can stop what the Father wants to do when I'm like this. I'm defenseless to this flesh. This flesh can't defend itself. This flesh can't stop what can come its way. Truly, only the will of God could. But nevertheless, not my will, your will be done. 
So I would say just allow God to stretch you. And even if you feel stretched in your pursuit for God, just know that it's along the same lines and you need to be stretched. And if you feel stretched beyond your capacity, just know that you are not stretched beyond your capacity. Wow. Talk about a major vulnerability being stretched in a place where you can't control, you can't stop, you can't hinder. Wow. My, 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 my. This is what God is calling us to do as a generation, as the scripture says, in whom are going to be part of the ends of the world that are, this is the generation. Uh, I don't believe that there is thousand, a hundred, even 50 years left. I believe that we need to make the decision because as Brother Hector said and Brother Wilson, God's going to use somebody. So it might as well be you and it might as well be me, but he's going to use somebody who is on their cross and following him. The Lord dropped a revelation in my spirit not long ago about that scripture about if any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. And I felt like the Lord showed me that there's those are almost like three levels, if you will. Denying self is where most people are willing to go. They're willing to deny themselves to a degree. But where very few are willing to go is to the cross, where he says, take up your cross. That's to endure affliction. The first place is sacrifice, finding an altar. That's denying self. The second level or second place is take up your cross, being willing to endure affliction, being willing to endure suffering. And the third thing is follow me. That's following him at his speed, his obedience, his way, his will, how he wants to do things in his timing. Very, very, very few people are willing to even get just to the second place of affliction, the place of suffering and stay there. But if we can stay there, my goodness, what will we hear and follow him. What will he be speaking? What will he be saying? And what will we see when we are truly yoked to him? But you can't be yoked to him without that cross. I feel like um, we have absolutely heard from God tonight. And I'm so glad that Brother Wilson was led of the Holy Ghost and shared what he felt. There is such a burden. And I hope some of you will go back and listen to this again. Go back and hear it. And if you were distracted even the slightest bit tonight, you need to go back and listen to it again, because I believe that that burden, that conviction, that weight of repentance is going to rest upon you, and it's going to drive you to a place of introspection and saying, God, this has got to die. This has got to go. This has got to go. In Jesus' name. And well, I feel like, Brother Wilson, we're going to say something. Brother Hector, is there anything else you guys feel that we need to do tonight? Well, praise God. I feel like we have heard from the Lord, and I really hope you guys don't leave what you felt on this Zoom call, and that you take it with you to prayer. And uh, we hope to see you all tomorrow, starting at 12 o'clock. We're going to hear from brother, uh, my, my pastor, Pastor David Wright, at 12 o'clock. He's going to teach on leadership. And then brother Hector Robles and I are going to tag team at 1 o'clock on taking territory. And then at 2 o'clock, we're going to hear from a Q&A. So I asked you guys, if you have not already, that you please uh, drop your questions in the Q&A chat. Drop your questions in there. We want to get to them. And we so look forward to seeing you all tomorrow, starting at 12 noon Eastern Standard Time. Uh, be on there. You don't want to miss this awesome leadership session by our great pastor. But we love you all. Let's just uh, let's finish off. Oh, there's my my baby. She's been a little sick. So good to see her. <laughs>
let's um let's finish this off with prayer. Why don't, Brother Wilson, why don't you seal it with prayer? And um, we will look forward to seeing you all at 12 o'clock tomorrow. Brother Wilson, why don't you seal it off for us? Yes, sir. Thank you, Jesus, Lord, for what you've done Amen. today. Lord, we pray, God, that you would continue, Lord, to flow even tonight, God. Lord, let this settle in our spirits, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, let every word that's been spoken, God, let it take root in the hearts and the minds of every individual that's on this call, God, even those that are watching or will watch in the future. Lord, let there continue to be impartations. Lord, we pray, God, for the speakers for tomorrow, Lord, that your will would be done, Lord. We bind every distraction, Lord. We bind every hindrance. We bind every stumbling block, Lord. We loose the freedom of the Holy Ghost. Lord, that your word would go forth, O oh God, in freedom and in liberty, Lord. Let the Q&A, God, let it go forth in freedom and in liberty. Lord, to continue, God, to empower this generation, Lord, to do what you have called and required us to do. Lord, we love you, God. We give you the praise, the glory, and the honor, Lord. We pray this prayer in Jesus' name. Jesus' name.